Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel, Chantia here. Today we are talking about the final episode of Married at First Sight, episode 17, Decision Day. I hope you guys enjoyed the back-to-back -back uploads for the deep dives I did for all of the couples. And I gotta say, my predictions were pretty much spot on, <laughs> except for one couple, which was the first one who surprised me, and that was Jasmine and Michael. So we're just gonna go ahead and, I guess we'll talk based in, on the order that they they they, or they arrived in, and we'll, we'll just talk about each of the couples and our reaction. If you have not already, go ahead and check out my Heel Feel Reveal series and check out my Monday Motivation videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Make sure you guys comment down in the comment section. You know, I just always ask that people are respectful or just consider, you know, we're talking about human beings here. So I like to think about when I'm on my platform and I'm talking about um, the people on the cast, I'd like to think that I say constructive things that I feel like I would like tell a friend. If I were giving them a little bit of tough love and I wanted to be honest about how I felt they could make better decisions, decisions in their life if they solicited that advice from me, then I would say these things to them. Let's go ahead and talk about Chris and Melissa. Melissa, see I already forgot her name. Chris and Alyssa. <laughs> So Alyssa showed up, Chris showed up. I was really actually excited to see Chris and then Alyssa was there and it was just the same vibe from her, the same vibe, the same stiffness. And you know, she she kept repeating, she's kind of like a broken record. She's been saying the same consistent thing. I, I didn't get what I want, da, da 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 Okay, you know, we can just kind of put that to bed. Chris apparently is dating again. I'm like, well, of course you should be out there dating. You didn't really have anything with this woman to begin with, so. I hope he is out there looking. In fact, please like go to town with that and move on. So that was really interesting seeing the two of them together. We got four out of four guys. We got four out of four. What are you thinking? Are you surprised? Are you shocked? I was on Twitter just trying to gauge people's reaction to the couples and the, the four yeses. And I was surprised to see that most people expected more no's or were hoping for more no's hoping more for no's and more for therapy. So I want you guys to comment down in the comment section because I'm really curious to know, like what was your anticipation about decision day? Were you thinking that most of the couples were gonna say no? Because I was thinking they were gonna say yes. However, what I've come to see from the show, like a lot of the couples said yes in the previous season too, and then none of them stayed together, is that people will say yes because eight weeks isn't long enough. That's what Jasmina said. And I would have to agree, eight weeks isn't long enough to get to know someone. It's a very quick process. However, <laughs> I think there's obvious reasons as to why you would say no, and there are obvious things to look for, and we're going to talk about that today, okay? All right, let's go ahead and start with our first couple, Jasmina and Michael. When they're replaying the scenes from before, I thought it was just so hilarious when they showed that scene with Jasmina, when she's like, don't talk to me, Michael. It just reminded me again how she treats him sometimes like an older sister or like a mother. I think it's hilarious. And I think it's one of the primary reasons as to why that attraction can't really build is she doesn't see him as a, a romantic potential partner. The flashbacks were really cute. I would say overall in this episode 17 and Married for Sight for Decision Day, what I really liked was that for the most part, the couple said really sweet things about each other. I like that. I like that they acknowledge, hey, we worked on this. We went through this together. We tried, we put in the effort, but it didn't work out. And I like that they acknowledge that. And I like that they acknowledge the, those positives in their partner. What I thought was interesting, so the, my vibe from Jasmina, I kind of get the same vibe from Jasmina as I get I got from Mirla and as I got from Elijah one where they're both and also Lindsay too they don't really feel like this partner is at the standards of what they want right this is not what I wanted this is not what I asked for this is da 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 da, da you know all of that they're feeling all of those emotions and they named all of it very openly only to say yes <laughs> But it also goes to show like when you're connecting with someone and you're having that heart to heart with people, by the end of the day, we listen to our heart, we listen to our emotions, our feelings in spite of the logic and in spite of some, I would say intuition, intuitive spikes of understanding, okay, this might not be the person for me. We don't listen to that often enough, but eh, we'll, 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 we'll go with it. We will just support the ride for what it is. Jasmina said that there's twice, two occasions where she thought of divorcing him. And it was so funny because she was getting, her and Michael and the experts were getting into a conversation about intimacy. And I thought she was gonna say that there were two times where she wanted to be physical with him. But then she said there are two times where she wanted to divorce him. 
And I thought that was hilarious because I wasn't expecting that to come out of her mouth. The whole conversation was full of double negatives. I was okay with him not, I didn't want to not snatch my hand back. I was not that taken aback. I didn't think I would want to be with you. It just seems to me those are all very clear, 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 clear signs that you don't really want to be with him. And Michael just sitting there hearing all this, I admire his patience for it, but I'm like, he could have said no too. You know, he could have said no too. And they were talking about the booty train. Now that was funny. The hashtag booty train, hashtag booty train. Okay, that was funny about the hand and the palming. I'm, I'm still not seeing it. I'm not seeing the connection forming between the two of them. I feel like throughout the entire season, they have put on, I would almost want to say a good show. I know that sounds like superficial, but I almost feel like they put on a good show. They put in the good effort. However, it just wasn't there. She friend zoned him the entire time, but they both said yes. And they said yes for the sake of, hey, we've only had eight weeks to get to know each other. I want to get to know you even more. Honestly, honestly, when you're in this like close partnership and you're being challenged to this extent, I feel like you do know, you do know if you want to be with that person or you have a strong sense of what you're f feeling. I feel like they just ended on, eh, we'll, we'll just, we'll just stick with it and figure out what works next. However, the one thing I will say in support of this union is that when, regardless of what other people have to say, you know, opinions and whatnot about your relationship, it's between the two of you. That is a sacred space between the two of you. And that is for up, that is for you two to decide whether you want to be together or not, not for the world to decide or place their judgment. If they want to work on themselves and work on the relationship, go ahead and do it. However, at the end, when they were packing up, we saw and we heard that they had that conversation about they're not really planning on moving in together. They're planning on living separately. So that again goes to show me they're not fully committed. You know, Mark and Lindsay have had a lot of blow ups and issues in their relationship, but at least they're willing to take risk and put themselves out there. Mark is even willing to be like, hey, we'll move into my grandmother's house. I have a home for us to share. And I thought that was such a uh, gentleman, like provider, protective, responsible, generous move for him to make. So I just feel like Jasmina and Michael are still kind of, they wanna be in their single, I feel like they, they're just meant to be single right now, not really be together. However, well, we shall see what happens. If they push past if, and they can develop the attraction and intimacy, I don't see it happening, but if they do, hey, I support love. I support love. I was surprised when they both said yes, but I wasn't shocked. And their reasoning made logical sense, which is the entire vibe of their relationship is that it's been logical. So we'll see how they proceed forward. All right, so the next couple we're gonna move on to is Elijah Wan and Katina. So one of the things that Dr. Pepper said about the couple is that they're a great match. Eh, I disagree, they are not a great match for the sake of um, he's not exactly in a healthy place for her as a partner, just the way that Elijah Wan talks about her. While they're sitting down and having that conversation about whether they're gonna say yes or whether they're gonna say no, what came up was Katina's cooking and he is honest to a fault, too honest. I Honestly, if it were me, I'd be like, you really just brought that on in front of everybody and told the entire world about how my food isn't edible. You do not have my back period. It's just the way he talks about it, right? I talked about it in my previous video about how he is tough, tough love, that too tough, not enough tenderness, too tough, not enough tenderness. And with that kind of more tough, less tenderness, your relationship really is limited to what you can experience with that person. Elijah Vaughn's constantly talking about how his mind is made up. If his mind is made up, that's what he wants and that's it. That's that's problematic. That is very problematic. Flexibility is just so necessary in marriage. I'm not gonna go into a long lecture about it, but I just hope the best for her. I think he, again, I think he has good intentions. I just think the way he goes about things is not so great and he doesn't see the error of his ways. He's still caught, he's still too selfish to be in a relationship. Let's just call it what it is. He's still too selfish to be in a relationship. And she is just such a sweetheart and it's gonna become a sacrificial struggle love experience for her. It's gonna to continue to be that until he it clicks with him and he sees that. Now, Twitter was freaking hilarious. Twitter was going in on Elijah Wan talking about how 
he was saying all these things about her and basically claiming that he's better than her. I've got that vibe from him the entire season is that he thinks he's better than her. He thinks she's not experienced enough. That's what he said time and time again. I said it in my previous video, even before decision day. I just don't know where, where her mind is at. I think Clotina is just a committed. She's loyal, she's kind. She sees the heart of people and that's what she sees in him. She sees potential, she sees his heart. She sees that he cares and she's willing to let certain things slide for the sake of making it work. That's the maturity, that thing that she has is what every person needs in a partnership to make it work. However, I do think it's a little bit too sacrificial, a little bit, it is sacrificial, but we shall see if he's willing to do that work. If he's willing to do that work, I felt like in the previews for the reunion, it looked like he was giving her a ring or something. It looked like she was kind of happy or something. She was reacting to something that made her happy. I think she is, has just been looking for a partner who will commit. And the one thing about Elijah Wan is he is, I think, loyal and he is willing to commit. That's what he has. The way he goes about talking to his partner, communicating to his partner, the lack of tenderness on his part. I wish, I hope the best for her. I really do. Okay, so that's Elijah Bond and Katina. I wish the best for both of them. Let's go ahead and move on to our third couple, Noy and Steve. Now, again, the conversation about between jobs. Now, what Pastor Cal brought up, <laughs> what Pastor Cal brought up about Steve was that when he met his wife, he was between jobs. And I'm just like, it's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant because that was when you met your wife. That's not when you signed up to get married. It doesn't sound like you said you met your wife and you guys got married before you got a job. It sounds like you were between jobs when you met your wife, so you had potential, right? That's fine. You can date someone who has, who's in that situation, but to marry them is a totally different thing. Now, again, I've said it before, I, do I think Steve is doesn't have money or isn't good with money? Obviously, if he was traveling in his car for four months and he got to experience an adventure, he has some practical understanding of money. Because practically, that is a great idea. Use your car, travel in it, go places, explore and have an adventure. And that's one way you can live your life. He seems very practical with money. He also seems generous, especially when it comes to <laughs> Noi, right? He bought her a ring, he bought her a ring. And I definitely think he's in love. Out of all the men, actually out of all the men I've seen in a lot of the seasons, I feel like his heart is just very genuine in terms of love. I feel like he's just so caring and loving and it's really great to see that on TV. It's really great to see a guy be a gentleman. He came in with flowers for both of the experts, including his wife. The thing about her not believing in him, I just, I think if you just show her your savings or, or your checkings or your bank account, that would probably calm her fears because then she would see you're great with money. When she went to one of the after party meetings, she had no idea how much he had in his savings. Throughout a good number for him to have. She said they hadn't really discussed it. This is why I keep pressing this. Why hasn't he discussed that with his wife? People are mirrors. So we might want to say, oh, you're making it difficult for this person to be a good person, but people are mirrors. So if you feel like your spouse is making you feel insecure, it might be to some degree you already feel insecure about that thing. I think he already felt insecure about the not job thing. I think Noi, Noi's concerns mirror his father's word choice when he called his son a vagabond. It's not exactly compliment, you know, when you call your child a vagabond. It's not necessarily disrespectful either or hurtful either, but a vagabond to me is just someone who just wants to do whatever. It's not when you, you're telling the future wife of your son or the wife of your son that your son is a vagabond, doesn't it exactly seem like something complimentary towards him. I think Steve already has some certain insecurities about that practicality. That's what I think. And I think that's just something he has to solidify in himself, believe in himself. As long as the two of them can get back on the same page, I think they have potential to do it. Just work together, build a plan together, and you guys will be fine. That's really all there is to say about it. They're cute. I thought the proposal was super sweet. That ring was so cute. And you know, I was talking about in one of my previous videos about how he got her a ring and that's not what she asked for, but she sure loved that ring. She said she was obsessed with that ring. However, that's not what she asked for. I mean, the ring, of course, is a great idea. It's a, an act of uh, generosity, demonstrative display of, I care for you, I love you, I will give to you, I will take care of you. However, it's the other things that are a mystery. So that's Noi and Steve. I think they're super cute together. Thank God we, thank goodness we had some kind of romantic, genuine romance and love 
connection on the show. Her reaction really showed that when she was just so in love with her ring, crying her eyes off. I thought that was so sweet. And I, I don't think we've had a moment like that on Married First Sight in a long time. Moving on to our final couple, Mark and Lindsay. So Mark and Lindsay are sitting across from each other and Mark says, hey, you know what? I'm going to say with this woman, I'm willing to work this out. Not surprised he said yes. I think Mark is been through enough relationships where he's willing to put in that work if he needs to for it to work. But Lindsay is a whole nother level. So this girl talks, of, she just like Elijah Wan, she knows how to talk people up, but just as much she knows how to tear you down. <laughs> and I feel like she just, that is not healthy energy to me to be around. So, I mean, this is Mark's choice. He's choosing this. My hope is that the two of them can find a way to work through their things. I think they definitely need intensive therapy for sure to be aware of that. Her dominating, are you his mother or are you his wife? Like, which one do you want to be? The way she talks about him about you're on social media, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. That's an opinion. You know, that's bizarre to me to talk to a grown man and tell him, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, she just has this need to control other people and control her partners and, and make them mold to her desires. She has no, no problem with putting pressure on them. Mark said that he's been pushed, like no one has pushed him before. You don't wanna push your partner and being pushed by a partner doesn't feel good. Pushy energy to me, I don't like that energy. It feels too, like someone's trying to dominate or control. I don't mind challenge. You can challenge me or you can uplift me or you can, we can work through things together. But to me, if you're pushing me, that's not, that's not the kind of partner I want. I need someone who, right? Ideally, we want someone who trusts us to make our own decisions, to think for ourselves, to be our own grown people. They all said yes. They are all happy at the end. Twitter made me laugh. I wish, I love Twitter. <laughs> Y'all do not hold back on Twitter. Overall, not surprised we got four out of four. It doesn't look like, even Mark and Lindsay, it doesn't look like anyone really broke up. If anyone did, I'm probably going to be surprised if anyone did break up because it doesn't look like anyone really is going for that choice. I think Lindsay's going to come for Alyssa, obviously, because she doesn't like Alyssa. And I think Lindsay's commentary on Alyssa was pretty accurate with how a lot of us feel about her because of the way she did Chris and just the way the vibe that she gives off. It just doesn't feel genuine. I think she was on point with that. Going back to Lindsay's commentary about social media and the superficiality of it, did you ask him if it makes him happy? I mean, did you think to ask that? That's that's my thing. Did you think to ask Elijah one? Did you think to ask Katina that she wants to cook? Did you think to ask her how that makes her feel? Does it make her feel what makes her feel happy? What would make her feel good? That's my thing. We we cannot we cannot maintain healthy partnerships without taking consideration of what our partner's needs are. That's what we're here to do. Is we're here we're here to help each other. We're here to help each other out. Be help me and help each other thrive. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Let's hit the like, subscribe, share this video, get more people to watch it. Please comment down below, share with me what you thought about decision day. Were you surprised? Were you shocked? Were you just honestly I just felt a little uncomfortable when Jasmine and Michael said no. Yes. I felt uncomfortable. After everyone else, I was just like, oh, okay. I thought it was hilarious when Twitter is like, all these couples should say no. I think the only one who really has the, the ability to thrive is Noi and Steve, like long-term. However, maybe they're the couple that breaks up. We just don't know. Check out my Hill Feel Reveal series. I will be uploading a new video this weekend, probably when I upload this video. Check out my Monday Motivation videos. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening. I will be back for the review for the reunion. I'm sure we all look forward to seeing how people change and grow and a little bit of drama. I'm not really getting a vibe that this season is going to focus too much on the drama. I think the group dynamic overall is very supportive. That's what I like about the all of them together. They seem very supportive of one another. Let me talk about the experts reaction really quick to everything on all the tiers. I think the experts, what they've come to understand is that they can't control the situations entirely. So I don't think they necessarily put couples together because they think it's gonna make a lot of drama. Maybe there's some inkling there, but I think for the most part, these experts have, they give good advice. Oh my gosh, let me return back to this. Pastor Cal, so Pastor Cal gave advice 
to mark about taking an L. I didn't like that. I did not like that because Lindsay's throwing an L at this guy every second that she can. So I don't like it when he says, maybe you should just take an L. No, teach him to set proper boundaries and to be honest about what is okay and what's not okay. Because she's being overly judgmental, overly controlling over his amusements. Pastor Kyle was talking about, well, if my wife doesn't like something, then it's my job to make sure she's comfortable. But I'm like, you guys don't understand. Lindsay has, I, I just, I don't trust her. When she says that Mark's not doing this, Mark, I don't trust her opinion because it's already exaggerated. The way she's talked about him, it's too negative for me to think that he's, um, absolutely terrible. I'm sure he has accountability in some areas, but the way she talks about him, it, there's an intentional, it's subconscious, there's an intentional meanness attached to that energy. Like, there's an intentional, I'm trying to cut this guy down and make him think he's lower than me. So it doesn't matter who, what partner she finds. She says that she, he needs to find her, a lesser woman, but really, any man that she attaches herself to, I'm sure she has a habit of making their, them a lesser man in her eyes. So that's just my opinion. But let's go back to the experts. So the experts' reaction with all the tears, I think at this point the experts have decided, hey, these people are adults, let's just make them, let them make the decision. We're here to kind of give positive advice, that's it. I think that's all the focus is for now, is they're not really partaking in is this healthy, is this toxic? No, no, no. They're not really interested in that. They're more interested in we're gonna let these people as adults make their own choice however i do have a problem because i feel like for the most part they are supporting they're being very passive about certain things because some things are really not okay and some people need to be told that like i think katina on many occasions could have been told hey that's not okay you can only let her know and she has to make the decision on her own whether she wants to be in a, this partnership or not and time and time again she's chosen to stay and that's what it is Okay, so I hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening. That is my final note to add to this review. Bye.